Hello and welcome to Views from the Market, Mid-Market Private Equity and M&A in Canada. My name is Mario Negro and I'm a partner in the M&A and Private Equity Group at Spike Minnelli. For today's podcast, I'd like to welcome Don Hilt. Don is the managing partner and founder of Distinct Capital Partners. Don, thank you and welcome. Thank you for having me, Mario. Don, we always start the podcast by asking our guests to tell us a little bit about themselves and in your case about Distinct Capital Partners. So I'm going to start there by learning a little more about you and the work you do at Distinct Capital Partners. I grew up on the West Coast, went to University of British Columbia and did my Bachelor of Commerce with a focus on finance initially, and then went on to complete my master's degree also in finance at UBC. So you might say that I, from an early age, I've got a finance focus and destined to be in that sector. And I've been doing that for the past 40 years. Initial 20 years of my career, I spent on Bay Street, worked for a couple of firms that are now part of some of the major banks, and did a wide range of activities, all the way from IPOs, initial public offerings, through debt equity financings, mergers and acquisitions, advisory services. Largely in that era, it was working with large cap companies, public companies with focus in that sector. I spent probably five or six years in private equity where I switched hats and from going from selling to buying and worked for a financial group that had acquired a couple of billion dollars worth of assets, worked with that for a number of years. And then around 2000, I decided to start my own firm. I left Bay Street and started what was a earlier predecessor to Distinct Capital Partners. And at that time, pretty much a, a one-man operation. And the, the idea was to take the skills that I had learned on Bay Street and apply them to the SME, the small to mid-cap market. And initially, sort of bringing the Bay Street to Main Street type of concept. I initially started off doing what I had been doing, providing full services. We did debt financing, equity financings. And not really with the major focus yet into M&A. We did a little bit of M&A, but in a couple of cases, clients, shareholders, of clients that I had raised money for asked me to go on board in an operational capacity. So I did a couple of stints as CFO and CEOs of public companies for a period of time. And then over the last 10 to 12 years, we really started focusing distinct capital into the M&A market, primarily on a sell-side advisory basis. We do some buy side, but it's not our primary focus. And when we do the buy side activities, we do usually arrange the financing for those transactions as well. We're a small group. There's five professionals in the firm and a couple of support people. And I think what differentiates us from some of this small to mid cap advisory services is our experience. As I say, I've been in the finance sector for over 40 years now. All of my partners have got more than 25 years experience in a wide range of services, all the way from operations to strategic planning, to business valuation, M&A accounting. So we provide a very broad range of services to these smaller companies that generally don't have access to that type of services. So all of our clients are private owner operated businesses. Quite often they're family businesses, sometimes second or even third generation. We're pretty much industry agnostic. You know, we've had experience in companies in manufacturing, distribution, service industry. We work primarily with companies ranging in revenues from five to 10 million up to a hundred million. And, you know, we basically bring, as they say, that large investment banking philosophy and approach to the smaller market. We find that the lower end of the mid market has generally been underserved both by advisors and also by buyers on, when we're looking on the sell side. Historically, for smaller companies, sell side activity revolved around strategic buyers, some smaller private equities, and a lot more of intergenerational transfer within families. Recently, in the recent years, we're seeing less of that. We come across very few situations where the intergenerational transfer is taking place. And I think there's a couple of reasons for that. In some cases, the next generation, the millennials, if you want to call them, have seen what their parents went through over the last 40 to 50 years as they're building their business. And essentially in that small universe, it's a 24 seven job. And a lot of the younger generation these days, 
doesn't want to put in that effort that's required to grow those businesses. And secondly, in a lot of cases, the business owner realizes that to realize on his investment that he's put in over that period of time, he probably needs to sell outside of the family. And so in recent years, we still have a lot of strategic buyers. We always go down both avenues, strategic and financial, when we're marketing a transaction. But, you know, we're starting to see, as I say, less intergenerational. We're starting to see a larger number of smaller PEs, maybe high net worth individuals or a couple of them grouping together to make acquisitions. And as you know, you're well involved in the search fund side of the business as well. We're seeing a lot more activity in that sector. So I think there's a lot of capital available and we're starting to recognize that there's some really good opportunities at the lower end of the market. Whereas historically private equity needed to have a certain size criteria to make it worthwhile for their time and capital to be invested, needed something that kind of moved the dial for them. We see tremendous opportunity in that lower end of the mid market. Don, you know, you hit on a couple of key points and I'm going to kind of frame it as your story and the story of just think capital is one of the things I've noticed, which I call it the kind of professionalization of the lower middle market. I remember, and you probably remember when it was more wild west and it did not have a lot of what I would call sophisticated sell side advisors, people who had like you point out, you know, ton of experience that they bring, but that's changed. You're a great example of the evolution of the marketplace. And I want to kind of talk a little bit more about that, that opportunity that you saw when you were wanting to focus with your kind of experience that you had, a track record, you obviously started to focus on this kind of lower middle market and, you know, where you see the opportunity and also you've lived it. So clearly you've been successful at it. So where is the opportunity in the lower middle market, both from a sell side perspective and from a buy side perspective? I think, you know, from the sell side, our clients, this is usually a life-changing event for them to sell their business. You know, they've spent their entire lives building the business and they get to a point where they start to think about transitioning out, but their highest and best value is to continue to operate the business. So they need an advisor who can essentially manage that process for them, put all of the pieces together, understand their objectives, come up with a transaction that really fits their lifestyle and where they want to go with the business. And always in mind with the other side, because there has to be a recognition of where the buyers are going to be for this type of activity. So we spend a lot of time, even before we're engaged on a mandate, we spend a lot of time with prospective clients, talking to them to understand their business. We do a full valuation of their business at the front end so that we have a meeting of the mind, so to speak, that we're on the same page in terms of expectations, in terms of value and structure. We explain to them what the market looks like, what they can expect to see in a transaction. And if we are engaged, we run the same process that you would find for many of the big accounting firms or investment banking firms. We start off with a detailed due diligence process. This is a long process. We tell our clients they can expect to be at this for up to a year from start to finish. And during COVID, obviously, it took a lot longer. But these days, I mean, realistically, they have to expect a nine to 12 month process. And that can be broken down into a number of stages. The first several months is getting ready. One of the challenges with smaller companies, they may not have a CFO or in some cases, not even a controller. So access to financial information is sometimes challenging. So that's where we have got accountants on staff. We can help with that. And we prepare the same kind of information that a large public company would require if they were going to market to be sold. So we prepare an information memorandum that while it does have a sales focus on it, it's full disclosure on, on that business. So a buyer taking our material that we present to them really has got a good sense of the value of that business. And when we get into the due diligence with a prospective buyer, we manage a very detailed data room and we take all of that responsibility off the hands of the entrepreneur because that's not something that they should be focusing on. So we see ourselves more as a team quarterback, if you want to call it that. We manage all of the disciplines that are involved. This could be accounting, legal, when we get into documentation, you know, quite often these days, banks are requiring quality of earnings reviews. So 
we can help buyers if they're not sophisticated enough to have that level of activity, we can help them with that. So we run a full process. And I think if everybody's on the right level of expectations at the beginning, it makes that process go a lot smoother. Don, you obviously have emphasized, and I think very well, how people associate these lower middle market companies as being too small to spend the time and the effort on. And clearly your thesis is otherwise, that you know, your investment is, as you point out, the same investment as a process for a larger company. And you work with these companies very closely. What do you find are some of the issues with these companies when they come to market or before they come to market? Well, usually before you come to market, and we have worked with a lot of transactions, a lot of buyers. So at the beginning, we put our buyer's hat on. So we do a very deep sell side, what we call sell side due diligence at the front end. And it's intended to identify and anticipate the issues that we will expect to see once we get to a deal due diligence stage. So the better prepared you can be, and if you can get to due diligence and have a data room developed that in anticipation of uh, a due diligence checklist coming in from a potential buyer, we've answered a lot of those questions. So access to, to information in both a timely and an accurate basis is critical at the front end. And that's probably where through lack of experience in these kinds of transactions, a small business owner won't have knowledge about that. Now, you know, one of the other things I wanted to highlight is, you know, distinct, obviously, is it based in Toronto? It's based in Oakville. And often when we talk about lower middle market companies, people think about sell side advisors and they think about them being in downtown Toronto, but you're not in downtown Toronto. You're in Oakville. And I always like to say that's kind of where the action is. That's for the kind of companies you work with. You're in the heart of the action. The heart of the action isn't downtown. It's where you are. And tell that's us right. about that aspect of the business. The fact that you are working and, and living close to these owners and really, which is, I think, one of the, the unique features of the lower middle market, that engagement with the owners directly in a much more personal way. Exactly. I mean, we have never signed a mandate or progress with a transaction without having met our clients face to face. Now, during COVID, that might have been a challenge for some people, but we're dealing with a demographic. You know, a lot of our clients are in their 60s or 70s, and they're somewhat old school. You know, they want to see the white city eyes. They want to see that you, at least you might look like you've had a lot of experience. But when I started Distinct Capital, I actually, I was living in Toronto and I had an office on Bay Street. Nobody ever wanted to come and visit me there. Uh, I was always in the car going around the GTA. And then I moved to Oakville. So it made sense to move the office to Oakville. It was much closer to the, the clientele that we catered to. And the business owners that I just look at the transactions we have on the go right now. And they're in Mississauga. They're in the Hamilton area. They're all around the GTA. So you're right. I mean, those call them old old industries that we deal a lot with in manufacturing and distribution, they're not located in the downtown core. They're located in the suburbs. Don, you've seen the focus on the lower middle market from a south side advisory, from a buyer side grow over the last 10, 15 years. What would you say has changed the most when you look at this particular space. As I've noticed it's professionalized a lot more. And obviously you're, the fact that you're in it is a great, a great example of that. that. That makes it easy for me to make that argument to see, you know, high quality people who've worked on bigger deals, who've decided that this is a viable path from both an economic and a personal satisfaction point of view. But want to get a sense from you, when you think about how the space has changed, you've been in it a long time. What have you, what have you seen in terms of the evolution of the space? Well, I'd say in the last, 10, 15 or so years, there's been a huge demographic shift. And I just look back a number of years ago, I remember reading a, a report that CIBC had prepared on the, um, the small to medium-sized company market. And they were estimating that probably half or more of these small businesses are owned by baby boomers. Now they're getting older. Some of them may have been looking at transitioning out of their business and you know, 2008, 2009 period, and they got hit with the recession at that point. And then 10 years later, they're 10 years older, 12 years older, and now we get COVID hit. So now, you know, we're seeing an older demographic and the amount of value in that sector is huge. And there was an estimate that, that the amount of, or the 
value, I guess, enterprise value, you might call it, of that small to mid-sized market was over three trillion dollars, three three and a half trillion dollars. And you know, to put that in context, the the entire market capitalization of the Toronto Stock Exchange is not that much more than that. So this is a huge transfer of wealth, and therein lies a tremendous opportunity for buyers. And I think there's increasingly more of them starting to focus on that sector. Obviously, those companies have to meet certain criteria. And private equity generally has got size parameters that they focus on. But there's a lot of capital available in the private equity market. And when those firms are flush, they are prepared to come down market in terms of size. There have been a lot of new entrants into the market. So we see a lot of activity for transactions in the lower end of the mid-market. Don, I always ask our guests the crystal ball question in terms of where they see the market going. I wanted to ask you the same from where you sit and the work that Distinct does. Where do you see the market going, particularly for lower middle market companies? We think it's going to continue to grow largely because of, of the demographics that I mentioned. We have seen a wide range now of business owners starting to plan a little bit earlier whereas they might have been focusing on selling in their mid-60s. We have some now that are you know, in their 50s. They're starting to plan to get ready for that transition. So we see it just continuing to increase. And for good, solid companies, there will always be a buyer. And for the market that we're in, we spend a lot of time to help them fill the gaps if there are any gaps before they do go to market. So when they do get in and start to present their opportunity, they are well prepared and well received. Don, I want to thank you for joining us. Greatly appreciate hearing your perspective, learning about Distinct and just the work that you do. And and we often think about deals and get too focused sometimes on deals happening in the city, but we forget that there's uh, a, a huge amount of deals happening in the greater Toronto area that are outside the city. And, you know, Distinct is a great example of the great work that's being done. So thank you for telling us a bit more about Distinct and the work that you're doing. Great. Thank you very much, Mario.